constant values for read onlys. Let's understand what constant is one more time. A constant can, up, can be applied to something that can change the value of the target back. Passing a constant integer just by itself doesn't make sense. If, I'm, if I want, if I see, okay, this thing is not supposed to change, yada, yada, I'm going to pass constant int num. Integer is passed by value. If you change the value inside, nothing's going to change outside. Why you are passing an integer as constant? Constant is to make the target read only. So the only case, not the only case, the only cases in which you need constants is when either you are returning or receiving a pointer or returning or receiving a reference. You need to think if it's supposed to be constant or not. Only for pointers and references. You have to check, do I need to make this constant? When do you, when the logic dictates the value, the reference or pointer that is coming in is not supposed to change the target, therefore I make it constant. That's number one. Number two, methods can only be constant, not functions. The compare function I asked you to create, it was a helper function. It doesn't have an owner. How can you make it a constant? This is what I'm saying. I try to always keep an open mind when I'm, when I'm marking something, okay? Which means I mark, I, first of all, I turn all the names off. I don't see who I'm marking. That's number one. Number two, each question that I'm marking, I assume that this question is just by itself. If the student did something horrible in there, I should not judge the rest of it because of that. But I'm a human being, and I think every teacher is like that. When you do something that I go, oh my God, how is it possible? Then it affects me when I'm marking the next one. It's human. You know what I mean? It's as if you're going, somebody curses at you and then offers you a free sandwich. You don't want that because he cursed you before that. You know what I mean? It's like that. So uh, if you do not understand something, don't write an answer. It much, gains much more mark for you than writing something to piss your, your prof off. I'm not talking about myself. Like any prof looks at the code you've written and says, what the heck is this? If you write something like this, then it affects the rest. It's just a, uh, an advice. <clears throat> Not writing an answer is always better than writing an incredibly nonsense thing. Um, uh, and I'll explain. Let me just commit this first. I jumped out of the other class. Uh, Binary files, indexing, and wrappers. Again, ladies and gents, I'm not nagging. Believe me, this is just, uh, I'm trying to be a 13 November. So it's a uh, kind of a review on your mistakes. So. So, as I was saying, <clears throat> I 
Okay. All right. Constants. If I have class student, and in here I have int student number, uh, something like this. First of all, always, always, always initialize your attributes. Always. Do it just like that, before anything. Okay? Then you can change the initialization if the program requires it. That gains you lots of mark. Okay? So if I want to display this, okay? If I want to display this, I'm going to say void or O stream reference display. I make this a constant. I understand that. Because display, display, display belongs to student. It's constant, therefore, it's not going to change the student. I understand that perfectly. OK? But if I write as something like this over here, Boolean compare or details, and in here, I am passing a student or passed. OK, I want to see if a student passed or not. Some criteria, whatever, I don't care. OK? So I want to see if it's passed or not. So I'm passing a student reference. If I pass a student S, nothing is supposed to be constant here. It's passed by value. Who cares if I change this? It's going to die after the past is done. If this, is, if this past is like this, then I need to think now, do I make this a constant or not? If, you are, if past is not supposed to change, you make it a constant. Const or not. If this past is by reference, it's the same scenario. If it's reference, you have to think, am I changing it? If it was pass, then you don't pass a constant because you are passing a student. So a student has to change. This is not supposed to be constant. By passed will be constant because it's just checking to see if it's passed or not. Let's put it like this. This is a query on a student. It is not supposed to change it. This is supposed to pass a student, therefore it changes it. This shouldn't be constant, this should be. Are we all okay with this? And if you write something like this, this is when your prof goes, oh my god. This is a standalone function. Constant who? It doesn't belong to any class. Why you make it a constant? There is no owner. This is to see if the owner is constant or not. When you have a standalone function, the standalone function doesn't have an owner to be constant or not. Don't. This is a horrible mistake. This means I do not understand anything about OOP. Don't do that, please. That's disastrous, please. So bad, bad, bad. Don't do this. Don't, please. If I can type, please. The is pass does not have an owner to be const or not. OK? Do we understand this, really, everyone? It's very important. And that's it. That's the whole criteria. And obviously, <clears throat> having something like this is extremely, like, oh my god, I'm returning a constant Boolean? What does that mean? Again, if your function is 
returning, say over here, if you are returning student reference read file. Change not saved? What the heck? Yeah. If you, student. If you are doing this, then you can think, uh, should I, should I, what should I do? Should I make it constant or not? Because it's a reference of something. Or if it was a pointer, again, you should think of it. <clears throat> do I make it constant or not? So this could be const, I understand. So I'm returning address of a student that I do not want it to change. Passing stuff by value cannot be constant. It doesn't make sense. You okay with that? All right, so that's a review of consts. Not okay. Okay, <clears throat> so that's that. Yeah, so that's const. Oh. <clears throat> Remember, I screamed at the beginning of the class and I said initialization is not an operator overload, it's a constructor. Remember? And I Give you the trick, yes. Pardon me? Oh, yes, 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 we do that. We do that. First, we do whining and screaming and shouting. We're going to go through it. Like, um, remind me after this. This is important. We need to. <clears throat> so, what was I saying? Yeah. So, uh, the difference between initialization and setting, uh, and, uh, and setting. <clears throat> I wrote this question, and all of you fell for it, almost no exception. I did like this. Okay, and in main, and in main, I wrote this. Everybody went to line eight. Everybody. Maybe two of you didn't. Assignment at the moment of creation is a call to one argument constructor. This is called line number seven, not eight. This is initialization. So this calls line number eight. But this calls line number nine. Setting initialization. Initialization call to a constructor. These three lines are identical. Is it seven? Oh, seven. Oh, shoot. These three lines are identical. Potatoes, 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 whatever you call it. All the same. No difference whatsoever. Please understand this. This is extremely important. Extremely important. 
Okay? So, yeah. And this is operator. Another thing. If I want to create display, if I write display, what is this thing displaying, everyone? What is this thing displaying? The student, correct? Student display, correct? Writing something like this is very unprofessional. You drive a car. You don't drive car a car. You know what I mean? You read a book. You don't read book a book. That doesn't make sense. Read book is IPC 144 because functions, they don't belong. In C++, each method belongs to something. Don't refer to it again. It doesn't make sense. That's bad naming. It means I'm still in C. Don't do that. Bad, bad. Yuck, don't do this, please. Do this instead. Whoa. When we are, when we are overloading an operator as a member, the left operand or the unary operand, uh, either we have a binary operator or we have a unary operator. Binary operator is A plus B. Unary operator is A plus plus. It has only one operand. When you are doing a member operator. The owner of the member is always the left or only operand, always. Therefore, providing the second argument means the right operand. Because of this fact, you can never have a member operator overload with two arguments. Impossible. And again, 30% of you did it. When I asked you to overload the plus operator to add two things, I don't remember what it was, whatever, tray, mug, whatever it was. I wrote you to write the, the prototype. You wrote the operator, member operator, with two arguments inside the class. If you had it outside, I would say, okay, he's writing a helper, or she's writing a helper. If you write a helper function that doesn't belong to any class, I understand for two Operands, you need two arguments because the function is standing on its own. Yuck, not object-oriented. But if you bring it inside, then also we did not even, I explicitly mentioned to you that we are up to week five, which means I'm not going to ask for insertion or extraction operator overload. And still when I ask you to make this function print itself, or write it or read itself, you put insertion and extraction not as a helper, as a member. Insertion and extraction operators can never be member operators. Why? Because the left operand is either C in or C out, which you don't have access for. Therefore, insertion and extraction operators are always helper functions. And they call a regular member method. Always. So this is never possible. You never have, first of all, you never have, uh, for example, uh, say int operator student mark and, and integer mark. You, you never have something like this. 
It's impossible. You cannot have two operator whatever, operator plus. Okay? You can never have it. Oh, another thing. Another thing. Oh. I'll explain. Anyway, so this is impossible. If I want the student to be added by a mark, this has to be gone. This means, this means, this operator means int a student A is C plus B. And one thing I need to do is const. Now it makes sense. I'm saying, I'm saying overload an operator plus. Overload an operator plus that receives an integer at right. A student left. It's the owner. And because it doesn't have side effect, it's constant. It doesn't change the owner. This is a binary operator overload as a member. If I wanted this to be non-member, then I then, as a helper, I could have done it like this. So I'm going to actually bring this all the way down. Now I could write over here. Now this is providing the exact same thing as that one. Non-object oriented, object oriented. Why this is bad? Because I have access to student. I could have brought it in. If this was C out, it was perfectly legit to do something like this because I didn't have access to the source code for it. OK? Another thing that when I ask uh, that this is one of the big turnoffs that uh, like, as soon as I see it, I'm like, this person did not open the book for even three seconds. Like, didn't look at the notes, didn't write a single workshop, ever, okay? When I ask you to add a method that reads, okay, that reads the student, and you do this, You're writing a function that receives a student to read as a member. That means I have no idea what object orientation is. This is IPC 144 to the bone. A member function that reads doesn't accept the student. It is inside the student. It is reading the student. What is this for? It doesn't make sense. Please. OK, go through these things. Go through the notes. Anytime you feel there is any problem, immediately, please. I have like three students that back to back are calling me and having appointments with me and asking questions. And these are all the people who got 95% in their test. Those people who get 50%, 60%, not a single appointment. Not a single call to ask for any problem, to help with anything. Ever. I don't know what, why. Please do that. Please call me. Book an appointment. If you see I am green, just call me. You don't need to book an appointment. Talk to me. Ask me for help. I'll, I'll take you through every single thing that you want. Please. So this is, oh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. OK, and writing gibberish instead of code. Like some people, like they go beyond, over and beyond. Like I, write, I ask them to write a function, they create this imaginary language, and they just write something in some language that I have no idea what it is. I mean, what do you hope for? Like, uh, I cannot say like a language that does, like not. I'm not saying like even writes in JavaScript or or Perl or Python. It's they writing something that I have no idea what it is. That's a huge insult to the professor. It means you're so dumb that the things that I wrote, you're going to say, oh, this is right. No. 
it's it's a programming language. If you miss a comma, it won't compile. Writing something random that is, has nothing to do with the language, hoping that this is the answer, is an insult to the prophet. It means you're stupid. You will not understand that I wrote something that I have no idea what it is. Okay? Please do not write gibberish stuff. Just don't write anything. It's the same thing, and you don't make this, the prof think of you in a bad way. They will. It's, it's a human thing. You know what I mean? It's if I ask you for a sandwich, you give me a Kleenex and say, eat it. It's a sandwich. Trust me. You can't. It's a napkin. I can't eat it. You think I'm stupid? It doesn't make sense. Okay? This doesn't make sense. Oh, sorry again. My apologies. I'm going and <laughs> copying from other students. Really? Like, give me the answer to the other walkthrough? Like, you're looking at it and write it? The walkthrough you're writing has 50 different versions. The chances that the two things are side by side are the same is like 0.2%. Copying from the other person, you're just telling me, I just copied. Like, it's, it's, it's exactly that. Because I look at it, it's the answer to the other walkthrough. There is no way that this walkthrough can generate this. The good thing about programming is that I change a 0 to a 1, and suddenly everything changes. And you cannot pinpoint that in the code. Please don't copy. Single characters, again, go back to string. Character CH cannot hold the name. It's a single character. Uh, I don't know what I, why, what, why did I put this comment here. I don't remember what it was. It's, yeah, anyways. So I'm, again, I'm sorry for all this ranting. I really apologize for it. Um, I'm hoping that it's going to wake a few people up and you're going to start going through things. Um, yeah, please. Anyways, uh, so that's that. Uh, So that's that. All right. I'm going to pause. So before we continue, what is the, any questions about the strings, the string uh, class that we have written? Any questions about uh, rule of three? We talked about mm, different types of operators. Plus equal, plus, plus, plus. Why, as I told you, you can use all these, you can use these for your, uh, for anything you want, okay? Just keep that in mind. So a few things over here, if we do it, would be nice. First of all, let me do this uh, operator overloading in here. So, so in here, I'm going to, uh, the operator overload that I did for in this. So we said that we would like to be able to treat the string like an array of characters. And to do that, we overload the index operator. And we said that index operator is essentially an operator that accepts, in this case, an integer. Um, this value that is passed to the argument in index in C is always an integer, right? You can modify it and put a character string in there if you want to. Say you want to, you write a phone number, you write a phone book, and the phone book, you want to have the name of the person in the index, so it returns the phone number. You can actually make this zero over here to be name of a person, and then you receive it and you search for it, so you can overload it to whatever you want. This value could be anything. In our case, we want to put an integer. That's why, that's why we created this. So we said, we said that uh, it's going to be uh, uh, a character reference returning and uh, returns uh, based on the size. And I'm going to uh, create the, the code for it. And the code would be as we did before returning the index mod length. So it 
loops within itself. Now, one thing very nice that we can do to this thing, and this is a beautiful review for a dynamic memory allocation, is to make this string resize itself if we need to. If you have a string and you want uh, the string grow even bigger when you set an index somewhere, instead of having this, you could have resized the string to give it access to that operator, to that index, which means in this case, if I keep going, so in here I can go, I can do something like this for uh, size t. I told you what size t is, right? I set to 0, uh, i less than name.length, and i plus plus. And I can go see out name i and say a space or a dash. So I put uh, separate uh, or space between them, something like that. And I go see out and l. So this gives me access to every little piece of what we have, as you see. Right? But if I keep going, if I go less than, say, 10, then it's going to fall back on itself over and over. So as you see, it's going to print. And as soon as the index reaches to the length, it goes back to 0 and resets it and goes back like that. So it's impossible for you to get out of your string. If that's what you want to do, fine. But if not, then give me two seconds. If I wanted to, in here I'm showing the first and last, right? So I want to write over here void first and last. So in here I want to pass a string to this. So if I want to pass a string, because first and last is only supposed to print the string, first of all, string has to be passed by reference because it's a class we don't want. Uh, uh, write an expensive program, so we write string reference s. We do something like this, and we say s, s, and s, right? And, and, and s, right? So that seems to be okay, right? Everybody's okay with this? So it's got to print first and last. So in here, I'm going to say first and first and last name. And then over here, I'm going to say first and last name. So are we OK with this? If I run this, it works exactly the same way. And in here, I'm going to say looping through. OK, so when I run this program, so when I run this program, it's going to loop through it over and over. Fred starts with F and ends with D. Gred starts with G and ends. We're good with this? All right. But this is not written properly because, because, my apologies, I have to leave that on. I'm sorry, I'm going to mute it. Let me just put it on vibrate. You'll know one day what I mean. Anyway, so, so, so the problem is that from what I taught, you would say, hey, you told us when you write a function that is not supposed to change the content, you have to pass it as constant, right? So nobody can change it by mistake. If I pass const over here, I'll be in trouble. Why? Because then my index operator won't work anymore. My index operator is, is, is 
returning a reference and should be able to change. No problem with that. You can actually write the constant version of it too. You can overload it. So you can simply say something like this. Right? So you say return a constant reference and uh, don't change anything. And in here, you do the exact same thing. But the difference is that because it's a constant, it's going to be casted to a constant when it's going out. Therefore, nobody can change it. And now, your program will actually work. So you have both one of them, the one that is constant and the other one that is not. And even for this one, because it's a single character, you don't need to even actually make it a reference because it's a single character, one character, one byte. Who cares? I can just take that out and just return a copy out of it, right? And I'm just saying, hey, this is not changing anything. Don't worry, right? We could do that. And it still works perfectly. Right? Questions now to this point? Another thing that we like to write over here is to make sure that our string, the string that we have, is compatible with C string. If I want to do that, then I have to say, hey, if anybody wants to treat me as a string, which is operator, constant character pointer, return the address of my data, right? Easy. So now, if somebody wants to use string copy and copy this, uh, I have utils over here too, right? Yes, let me add utils over here. So I'm going to say include utils. So now I can have something like this. I can have something like a character, uh, the name, 50. And I can actually write this. Take a look. I can actually write ut.string. It was, it was u.string copy. I'm going to say string copy into the name, the name. It will work perfectly. I put my object where a constant character pointer is supposed to be. Because I cast, I overloaded the cast, even the string copy will work. And because it's constant, you cannot put it at the other side. That's going to fail. Therefore, people won't, cannot make a mistake. You cannot go SDR copy into name a new name. You can't do that. For this, you have to do it properly, which is essentially saying right? And this will take care of all the things that we have done. So now your string is something that you can use properly. You can, you can do compare in it, make sure that uh, it works. So, so all the things that you wanted to do with strings, like be able to compare a string with another and see how those things, so all the comparison stuff. You can add them all over here. So Boolean, operator, uh, this is the right hand, so I'm going to sort of const string reference s, and in here I'm going to have it const, so it's just checking to see if it's greater than. Uh, less than, greater than, less than or equal, greater than or equal, 
equal, not equal. Do we have anything else? That's it, right? So you can implement all these. So, and they're all there. So you can just go over here and say, in this case, return uh, u.str compare between this and s, right? Between this and s being less than zero, because that's what the string compare is. Because it, it, it casts it automatically, right? Um, and you can always have things. Uh, so actually, the best way to do it is like this, it's writing if uh, This is not a right string compared to right. This is wrong. Because if any of these is null, then we're in trouble. So I'm going to write one of them. You write the rest. OK? So in here, I'm going to say uh, Boolean result is set to false. Then I'm going to say if uh, this and s, which means if they are both if they are both good, right? If they are both good, that's the result. Then I'm going to say else if not this and not s. It means if they're both bad, then result is good. Oh, result, actually result. Oh, no, if any of them, or if any of them is bad, or actually, that's it. I don't need to do anything. For this one, is easy. Yeah, return res. The one that was difficult is checking the comparison to equality. If they are equal, then you have, to, if they're both bad, they're equally bad. So you have to do that. So you have to make it a little intelligent, but that's how it is. Up, overload all of them, and your strings can work exactly like variables. And you can use it for anything you want. Yes? Ternary operation. With question mark, that's not, that's not uh, overloadable. That's the only up. So write, write two return statements. Oh, sure. I like that. So you're saying return this. Um, I like that. Yeah. So if they're both good, where am I? They're both good, that's the result. If they are not, it's false. Yeah. Good. Perfect. Thank you. Pardon me? Oh, no, no, no. It's less than zero. 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 So for the other one, for greater than zero is easy. So for greater than zero, you just do like this. Right? And for uh, the other two, for less than or equal, and so I'm going to say greater, uh, greater than or equal and less than or equal, you just return not uh, operator. So this is less than or equal, not operator greater than s. And this one is going to be not operator greater than, less than S. So, so these four are written. The other ones do it yourself, please. 
the equal and not equal. Okay? So not equal, you should now, for those, you have to check if one of them, like for example, not equal, it should be if one of them is bad only, it's good, and they are not equal. If uh, for the equal one, if they're both bad, it's good. So you have to do that. So co complete that yourself, and that's the string. So you can add this to your utils file and use it for whatever you want. It's, it's very useful, actually. Anyways. Uh, so that's the string. Uh, all the operators and whatever we had. So uh, that's that. And I'm not calling my mom, I'm calling Uber to go to my mom. <laughs> okay, so it's 103. Let me just uh, uh, clean this up. It's two seconds. Uh, um, so that becomes string main. Uh, the string is not functional, by the way. You have to add those two things. So a dot string. You have to add those two operator overloads. Do it as a practice. That's going to be in your quiz the next time. OK, so I'm going to start by doing this now. And uh, in a minute, I'm going to uh, stop. So let's say, I think I started the age correction thingy. Let's say I, I have a class called uh, age correction that is supposed to correct an age for me. OK? So in here, I'm going to create an integer m age. That's the age is gonna, that's going to be in uh, and public. And then I'm going to have a max value, a max value, a max function that sets what is the max value, int value, and void min int value. So it corrects the minimum and a display. O stream. Why is it giving me? What? Yeah, but why is it giving me an error? Oh, yeah, using namespace, you're right. All right, <clears throat> now save this, pause. So it has a max and a min and a display thingy, right? So what I do in here is this. And what I will do is this. I'm going to say, uh, so in this max value, I'm going to say if m age is greater than value, OK, then I'm going to say m age is, val is value. I am correcting the age. In here, I'm going to say if m age is less than value, then m age is value. Just correcting the value. Then in display, I simply display it. So return OSTR. Uh, uh, Oh, so we are having that. No, we don't need that. So I'll remove it. Display. I don't need to display. So that's it. That's what I want to do. I just want to correct the name, and then I want to print it. So in here, I want to say int age, and I want to do this. Good. I want to do this. So I'm going to say. So enter your age, get the age, and <clears throat> then create a CH. So I'm going to have over here a constructor saying age correction. 
int age, and in here I'm going to, I want to set, and I'm going to bring this down, in here I want to say um, age correction int age. What I want this thing to do is that when I do that age, age correction, I want this age to be bound to this age. So when I correct the value of age correction, I want age to get corrected. This will not happen, obviously. The reason is Let me run it. Okay, so in here, when I, when I get the age, obviously, I'm going to put over here 100, okay? <clears throat> and let's bring this at left and this one at right. Now, <clears throat> the, age correction is getting, the age correction is getting called. Therefore, mH will be set to 100. Then it comes out. Then I'm going to say set the maximum to 70. It comes over here. Because it's greater, it will set it to 70. It comes out. That one doesn't do anything. Then it says corrected age is 100. It doesn't change anything. I, I could not bind this one to that one. OK? This age correction will not correct the age. The age inside C age is corrected. How can I fix that? I can fix that by making this a reference. So when the value is being set, whatever in here, the, this become the reference of the age outside. There is a problem. References cannot be created like that. They have to get initialized. I cannot just create an age. It has to get initialized. How can I initialize a reference inside the class as an attribute? It is impossible. Because when the constructor is happening, the age is already created. This sets the age, not because of that, we have something called initialization area, which is this area. In this area, between the closed parentheses of any constructor and open curly bracket, you can overwrite the initialization of anything in the class. If you had this initialized to something, you can overwrite that. Or you can initialize it and don't do it over there. So instead of initializing here, you can do the initialization over here. How? You simply put a column, put the name of the Ver, uh, attribute that you have, and you set it what, it what you want it to be initialized to, and done. Now, this will be initialized to age, therefore it will be a new name for the age outside. This place, we call initialization area. If you Google initialization area, it won't show you anything. It's the name that I put for it. There is no specific, I don't know what is its name. If you know what is its name, let me know. Okay, this area over here is the place you can initialize anything over there. And if I had over here something, <clears throat> so let's say over here I had string, constant character pointer uh, correction name, title. Okay, so in here I would say string, oh, I should uh, go to the string and comment the two things I did not implement, so I can use it. We'll do it later. So let's say in here I say string, and I'm going to write M title, and I'm going to set that, uh, initialize that to no name, right? <clears throat> now I can come to the initialization area. Oh, STDS. Is this string in STDS? Yes. I can come over here and say, so this one is going to be 
constant character pointer title. <clears throat> now, if, if, I, if I had another constructor over here, only with age, if I had another constructor over here, only with age, it would have been a no-name one. So if I have this one, <coughs> then if it's created with that constructor, it will be no name. In here, I want to initialize, change the initialization to the title that is coming in. So I can add the second initialization saying initialize m title to the title that is coming in. So now that initialization will be ignored. Instead, this will happen. This overrides that one. Okay? Are we okay with this? So remember, initialization area is the space between any constructor and the open curly bracket. You start it with a column, put the name of the attribute, and anything you want to initialize them with. And that will initialize it. This is not setting. It's initialization. Yes. Member initializer list. There we go. Initialization area is better. Yes. It's not assignment. It's initialization, which means M title will not exist ever without a title in it. It will get created with title in it. Essentially, its constructor will be called, and it will be set to a title at the moment of this one. Yes. Yeah. If you, if you, you can all, anyways, initialize here everything. If you don't like it, you can override it here. Yes. No, 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 it's, initializ it's initialization. What do, you, what, what do you say about the reference? Can you say something like that about reference? So don't confuse anybody by, by saying that. You are saying, but inside title, it's not initial. No, the title over here is being initialized here. Now, what happens inside title? That's inside title. I have nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. The default constructor first will be called, then you override it with something else. So if I bring it in here, if, if instead of this one, I write over here m title is equal to title, it will still work. But first it will get created with no name, then that no name will be overwritten with title. We don't want that. Instead of that, I want it to get initialized with this. Therefore, I'll, I'm doing it like ah, this. Capish? Are we good? That's it. Have a beautiful day. I'll see you soon. I have to run for a